Please welcome the NTS Chairman, Christian Harloff. All right, guys, thank you for uh, joining. Thank you for the press for being here today. I'm really excited, super excited about this match. I'm excited what the Schmodown has done, and especially for what Collider and Complex has done for this thing. This thing has grown. This thing is huge now, and I really appreciate not only you guys and for all the fans out there that have been making this thing what it is. Um, look, the Ultimate Schmodown started in 2014, and it was just a simple kind of movie trivia contest blended with some UFC and blended with some WWE, and it's, and it's really kind of taken on a thing of its own here. We started with eight competitors here in this Ultimate Schmodown. This year's pretty big. Our first tournament we ever had, we crowned a champion. This one's gonna determine who faces the champion, Dangerous Dan Merle, in the Schmodown Spectacular in December. With that, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a tidbit of information of stuff that we're gonna be doing here in the Schmodown. Now, you know we have knockouts. We, uh, we have knockouts that after the second round, if you mathematically eliminate your opponent, you're knocked out. Well, we're thinking we need to add technical knockouts. And how are we gonna do that? Well, if you go into the third round and you don't have to answer a question, if your opponent hits his one, misses his one, three, or five and doesn't give himself enough points to keep himself in the match, it's a technical knockout. So anyone who has scored that in the past will be credited. That's something that I wanted to let everybody know, and that's going to happen from this point on. But that's not why we're here today. We're here today because we've got the two best right now in this league going up to, for a, ch a chance to go up against Dan Merle. And I had the pleasure of introducing both of them. Now, the first guy I know pretty well, he is my partner in crime, not only with creating this thing, this guy, what, what a run he's had so far. He's only lost one match and he pitched a perfect game in that match. And that's when we had a Jeopardy round in this, this new format, he's been flawless. Ladies and gentlemen, with a record of four wins and one defeat, co-holder of the team championship, please welcome the number six seed in the tournament, Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Sit down. All right. And his opponent, this guy also, you talk about run. This is something pretty spectacular what he's done. Most people you think would have quit after what happened with Bespin. We all know about Bespin. This guy didn't let that happen. He has had an historic run here in the Schmodown, beating some really top competitors. His last match, he beat the former champion Mark Riley. He beat myself and scored 21 points in doing so. We know he can run his mouth. But can he run it this time? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the number five seed. He is four and one. He is the outlaw, John Roca. Oh, wow. there he is. All right, Roca is going to sit down here. And this, these are your competitors for the Schmodown, the finale, which is happening on October. I shouldn't even be here. It's a waste of time. All right, take it I easy. I should be training right now. This is a waste of my time. October 21st. Oh, I'm gonna turn you into parade, baby carrots. I'm gonna feed you my baby pit bull. I don't think you have a dog. Oh yeah. All right, let's take it easy for a second here. October 21st is when this goes down. And all right, before we get into the questions here from the press, which we I know we have a lot, I'm gonna start with you, Mark. Yeah. All right, so look, man, you've had a pretty good run here. We created this thing two years ago, and yeah. here you are. You got a shot at taking the title. Talk a little bit about it. Why, why do you really want to play Dan Merle in this thing? Well, I mean, you knew it would be one of us, buddy. You know, yeah. uh, we're both great competitors. That's why we came up with this game to begin with. And when you look at who's going to take down Dangerous Dan Merle, I think it should be somebody who not only represents the brand, but also represents good, represents justice, represents light in the world. And you're not going to go to Lightning Jack for that. <laughs> You know, I mean, the guy's like a one trick pony. He's a heel, he's a bad guy. They don't win in the end. I want to win in the end and I'm going to beat Dangerous Dan Merle, but first I got to take down this clown. Yeah, just calm down there, Weekend at Bernie's. You calm it down. All right, so Roka, Seriously. response? Yeah. What, what do you want me to respond to? I beat one schmo, I'll beat another schmo. What's the difference? You beat one, you beat them all. Ain't all right. no big deal. But is there look, any- Look how little he's taking, look how little, how, he's not even taking this thing seriously. Just hanging out, having pizza. Look at him. These are carrots. Yeah, whatever. 
Well, do you, are, is there anything? So you don't, are you even? Do you fear Ellis at all? Is there anything about? Uh, he's Ellis? a bag of bones in the way of the belt. That's all he is. Uh, I, who I want is Dan Merle. Dan Merle has the belt. Ellis is just in the way. That's it. Like everyone else, through this entire run, they've all just been in the way of the belt. And what did I say after Bespin? I was coming back for that belt after I beat Makuga. Coming for the belt after I beat Mance. Coming for the belt after I beat you. Coming for the belt and after I took care of Riley. Coming for the belt. That's all I care about. That's all I want. A lot of coming, a lot of belts, Christian. <laughs> all right. So we, I mean, look, you guys are both talking about Dan Merle, but you got to face off. On you each keep other. making your jokes. No one else is laughing at your stupid little jokes. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's open it up. I want to take some uh, questions here from the press. We got, uh, hey, Josh Makuga, we, who we all know pretty well. What do you got, Josh? Hey guys, uh, big fan, uh, real big fan of the show. Uh, yeah. You know, we've got a lot of questions from Facebook out there. Uh, this one comes from Alexander Brandt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to direct this to Mark Ellis, but it can go to both com c competitors there. What weaknesses do you see in your opponent's game? His entire game. You see, see <clears throat> a total weakness in Mark's game. His entire game is weakness. Well, how Look, come? At Look at the way he looks. Look at the way he's dressed. He doesn't take it seriously. I've seen him answer questions. He got, what, he got a perfect score and he lost. How do you do that? How do you get a perfect score and lose? Your game is weak, son. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I mean, like, there's not a lot of holes in Roka's game, I'll be honest with you. The guy's a hell of a competitor. That's what got him here to this point. He's been watching movies a long time. I think he went to the premiere singing in the rain. I mean, <laughs> he's been around a while. That's right. He's been to a lot of films. I think that sometimes Roka psychs himself up a little bit too much. If there's an advantage I have, it's that John Roka tends to get amped up before a match, and I think that that's going to come back to bite him in the ass. My life is amped up. I don't get amped up before him. I get amped up before I go take a piss. I get amped up before I get a food. My life is amped up. This is normal for me. That's what you don't understand. So you, you white boys sit back there and you're like, oh, like this. I live here, piss. son. I live here. All right, let's see. Yeah. What, what else we got? We got another one. This is from Perry Nemiroff from Collider.com. She's I'm one of my so favorites. starstruck right now. You guys, you're Perry's the best. one of my favorites. I, I have a question nice to a fan. from Ben Kramer. What will factor into your choice of numbers for round three? Favorite athletes, an important date, or completely random? It's a great question. It's a great question because particularly when you talk about me and Roka, we are both huge fans of the Washington Redskins. So, you know, it, a number of times I've picked the, the quarterbacks that have won Super Bowls for them. I went Theisman, Rippin, Doug Williams one year. Um, I have not decided on a strategy yet. I think I might go with something that is more baseball oriented than basketball or football. Mm. You got any fascinating anything? answer? Did anybody stay awake for that one? That was boring as hell. Let me tell you something right now. I'm a fan of the Washington Professional Sports Football Team. I don't call them that name anymore. So let me tell you that right now. It's the difference between me and you, Ellis. What I'll tell you right now is I don't tell you my strategy before I have the match. Are you crazy, Ben Kramer? I'm not going to tell you what I do. That's how I've gotten this far. All I'm going to tell you is just watch what happens, and you'll see. Oh, right. man, I'm really excited to watch you pick numbers. Yeah, how dare you. How dare you. Hi, guys. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, big fans. So this question comes from Peter Parker. I'm sure that's not his real what? name. I'm sure it's not. That's uh, It's a question Roca. to John Roca. Yeah. How do you see the match going? Close, or do you look to get the knockout? If we get to the fifth round, it'll be a miracle. I'm taking Ellis out early. Be done with it. It's horseplay. Child's play, and then I'm heading off to take on Merle. Everybody I've beaten on the way to Ellis, Ellis has beaten some cupcakes, and I beat powerhouses to get to the title. So I'm confident that whatever's going to happen, I'm going to knock him out before we get to the fifth round. Anything that's like Ali said, knocking him out. I predict the round, fourth round, I'm going to knock him out. Well, let's address the two things here. Let's address hey, do you, the, your road to get here, yeah. saying it was an easier road, plus the fact you're saying you're knockout. You want to respond to that? Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't uh, necessarily the toughest road, although I will say the competitors that I had in front of me surprised me. They uh, didn't seem like they were going to be that good going in, but a guy like Josh McCuga, who I underestimated, and I give him all the credit in the world. I thought I was going to knock him out early. He took me to the limit. Yeah. With Beat Roka, him. he's sitting there and he's doing math. He's contemplating when he can get me out, probably because he knows when it gets down to the fifth round, he's going to choke. And I don't care when I beat him. It can be the third round, it can be the fifth round. It doesn't matter to me when I beat him. As long as I get the W at the end of the day, I'm good to go. You're not going to get a lucky Van Damme question this time. You're going to answer a real question of a real movie. All right, Mark, you want to give a final message to your opponent here, John Rocha? Sure. I mean, it, it has been an exciting journey. And just as somebody who is one of the creators of the Schmodown, we're very excited to have Tumbleweed Baker in there. He's oh, somebody that if you had to cast a singing cowboy in a 1950s movie, that's the guy you go to. And he had a trick. He played it to its maximum potential. And now it's done. So Rooster Cogburn, I hope he has a nice retirement. I hope he rides off into the sunset with Lonesome Dove because that's the only place that he can have any sort of career because the Schmodown's done for him. 
All right, John, yeah. response? No, here's the response. Uh, Mance did all that, making the jokes, making the comments. People make jokes. Let them all make jokes. I don't make jokes. I just win. That's all I do. So he can call me any number, hop along Cassidy, whatever he wants to call me, Woody from Toy Story. I don't care. <laughs> I'm driven one. to win this thing. That's all I'm driven to do. All right, so... Wait a minute. I want to say one more thing. All right. This is my destiny. This is what people need to understand. If I beat Ellis, or when I beat Ellis, if, when, that'll be five in a row. That means I tie Riley's streak. I've already got the highest points record, and once I beat Dan, I will have broken that. And I want all the records. I want all the belts. I want all the records. That's what you don't understand. I'm driven, and it's my destiny to win both championships. Do you want a hug? <laughs> all right, guys. So it goes down this Friday, October 21st, the finale of the Ultimate Schmodown. Mark, Baby Carrots, Ellis, John, the Outlaw, Roca. All right, before one more thing, we'll get the guys up here. I guess, again, wanted to thank everybody. October 21st, you're going to have the Ultimate Schmodown finale. Mark, Baby Carrots, Ellis, John, the Outlaw, Roca. Guys, take your shots if you want. Howdy, partner. You're rope and steer. Oh, Mickey jokes. But I'm going to take you out. Do all that crap that you want to do. It ain't going to matter. Gonna get in the I'm going to knock harder. you out. I'm going to take you out. I got six Some shooters. I'm going to carry you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe she'll post about it on Facebook or something. I'm going to take you out, Ellis. Just know that. What was the last part? All right, guys. Thank you very much. We got John Roca, Mark Ellis. Thank you guys to everyone. We'll see you on Friday for the Schmodown. All right.